In this module, we are going to look at three patterns to common atom sphere integrations. And they are synchronous web service, asynchronous web service, and accumulate then process, or also known as queuing. As we look through each integration pattern in this module, each one will contain a set of content that defines the pattern. So let's take a bird's eye view of what that content is. First is the description or what the pattern does, then the motivation and why you would use this, then some examples, some use cases for that pattern. We want to show you a solution as some kind of a diagram or description, a logical map of that integration, and then some general design ideas, implementation considerations, and implementation detail issues. Also some error handling for handling the errors that are bound to happen some sample Boomi implementation, some screenshot of a canvas or a sample process review in Boomi, and finally some implementation notes or additional issues or considerations. Before we dive into the first one, let's review some terms and concepts. The source, so this would be the source system or database or file location, and the target is the target system as identified within the process. A message or a document is the data that's traveling as part of an integration process. The data store is a database, message queue, or file storage. The SOA worker is a persistent JVM running in the cloud. API is application programming interface. And idempotent is an operation which will have the same effect even if invoked multiple times with the same parameters. So first up is asynchronous web service pattern. An asynchronous web service is used when the calling system does not need an immediate response. Boomi allows you to expose an existing process as either a SOAP or RESTful web service. Also, you would indicate while setting up the web server that there is no response. In this case, Boomi allows us to publish a business process as a web service, which can be invoked by other applications. The motivation for implementing an asynchronous web service is that the source system wants to continue processing as the response is from a long running process. In this case, the source system fires and forgets the message and continues processing on that thread. The Boomi process may be invoking either a long running batch process on a target system or it may need to wait on the results of multiple systems before it generates the required response. An example of this is a loan application broker would accept basic information from a customer and then pass it on to various financial institutions for processing. The customer does not need to wait on the results as the response times for different institutions would be varied. The Boomi process would be exposed as an asynchronous web service to outside applications. This image is a solution diagram visualizing what we just talked about. First, the atom would listen for an HTTP input request in the Boomi web service server. Then it would do required business processing. This could be a database lookup, or it could be a web service call, or a series of process calls. Then, optionally, there could be a return response from the destination system. Then Boomi sends an HTTP 200 OK status message back to the source system. So the solution would look like this. A triggering event will send a request to Boomi Web Service Listener Endpoint, and this request could be SOAP or REST. The source system can continue processing after the request is sent to the Boomi Listener. It will not wait and block for the response. The Boomi Web Service Listener can send an optional acknowledgement back to the source system. This feature, if implemented, can help prevent a message being sent multiple times by the source system. The Boomi source continues processing the request by implementing requisite business logic. In this variation, a callback handler message is returned to Boomi. The callback could be an acknowledgement message or update to original records. The handler can be implemented if any information needs to be sent back to the source system. So in this method, it's possible that the sender could send the same message twice. So the process needs to be able to accommodate, for example, a duplicate check against a destination app or maintain a list of messages processed in integration layer or defer handling to the destination app. Um, an example of that would be an upsert API if available. 
Often the source wants to be notified when the record has eventually been processed successfully. In these cases, the integration can call back to the source application via an API or callback URL to update a status field or send a new event. A polling process could also be set up in Boomi to update the source system with a response generated from the target system. This would be in lieu of implementing a callback handler. Here are some possible errors around the web service process. If the source can't reach Boomi, then the sender must resend. If the sender does not receive immediate acknowledgement, then the sender must also resend. However, if the error processing message is in Boomi, then Boomi must retry. And finally, if there is an error in sending to the destination app, then Boomi must resend the message. Here we have a sample process. Step one is to set up a web service listener. The start step will use the web services server connector. There is no connection. The uh, connection is actually the Atom's shared web server configured in Atom Management Console. The operation component determines the specific endpoint based either on the resource path or SOAP action. This will be listening for both SOAP and REST requests. Step two will branch the document to three different processes. In step three, three sub-processes act on the document and send back a response into the master process. In step four, the responses from the three sub-processes are combined into a single document. And in step five, you should probably have a connector here, but this is just an example. But the point is that the process ends and does not return a response, therefore it is asynchronous.